in effect nobel laureate and scientist c v raman announced the discovery of historic raman effect on this date in 1928 It was for this discovery that he won Nobel Prize in Physics in 1930. This day is celebrated to inspire and encourage youth to develop interest in science. On this special day, I feel privileged to welcome our keynote speaker, Dr. N. Bhuvana Ma'am, Associate Professor of Chemistry from JPR Institute of Technology. She has a rich experience of 16 years in teaching and four years in research. Her area of research includes geochemistry, environmental chemistry and photochemistry. Her PhD thesis entitled An Investigation of Riverine Sediments of Kochalayar Basin in Tamil Nadu is a pioneer study on ecotoxicology of river Kochalayar which is of noted interest these days. She has published many research papers in various national and international journals. of high repute indexed in web of science scopus and sci she also takes the credit of reviewing about 12 research papers in various journals she has also presented papers in various national and international conferences including an international congress and has also filed two patents her passion for teaching is well proved by centum results produced by her in the subject of engineering chemistry and environmental science and engineering she is a dedicated teacher and a continuous learner she is a personal counselor and mentor to students and is highly active in psychological conditioning to students she is also dedicated to train students in soft skills and interview presentation skills to encourage students towards placement recruitment we are very fortunate to have you here ma'am now i humbly request bhuvana ma'am to take over the platform and enlighten us with her thoughts thank you so much ma uh, i am so glad to be a part of your celebration today i just want to confirm one thing is the screen visible to you all yes ma'am it is visible ma'am okay ma'am uh, do you want me to switch on the video I have switched on, but I think I have some problem in presentation. Okay, that is your wish, ma'am. Okay, ma'am, is the video visible? Yes, ma'am, video is visible, ma'am. Okay, okay, ma'am, okay, ma'am. Okay, so I'll go on with my presentation now. Okay, ma'am, okay, ma'am. Okay, so happy Science Day to all of you. So um, already I have been introduced by. one of the students i think it is eli larasi thank you so much ma it was a very good introduction but anyway i would like to start formally by saying that i am dr n buona i am working as associate professor in the department of chemistry jpr institute of technology and today i would like to enlighten you all on a small topic a very simple topic which is known to you also that is a walk through the rise of science and technology So let me just move on to the slides. Slide is not moving. Just a minute, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Some technical glitch is there. Just a minute. Is the screen visible? 
screen is not visible, ma'am. Okay, okay, just a minute, ma'am. Instead of screen, whiteboard was open, ma'am. Okay, 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 ma'am. Repeatedly, whiteboard is opening, ma'am. Oh, shit. Just a minute, ma'am. I just rejoin, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. again okay mom okay mom put your screen in slideshow mom uh, okay mom you can proceed mom okay mom okay mom. okay thank you mom. okay sorry for the inconvenience caused okay so as we are celebrating national science day and we all know that national science day is celebrated on 28th Feb, ever since 1986. Do you know what is the importance of the year 1986? On February 28, 1986, Sir C. V. Raman discovered Raman effect. Though he discovered it earlier, he declared the discovery on 28th February 1986. Sir C. V. Raman, along with his student, Mr. Krishnan, worked on this Raman effect and they declared it on this day. And since you know that uh, Science Day is celebrated on the occasion of uh, the discovery of Raman effect, you should also know what is Raman effect. So to be um, in a, I mean, uh, to summarize what is Raman effect, I'll just tell that it is the scattering of light by molecules. Now we should not think that it is a very simple phenomenon because Scattering of light by molecule is very easy, but studying it is very difficult and it has taken more than 20 years for Sir C. V. Raman to study on this. And the use of this Raman effect is in the characterization of the synthesis of molecules or study of the structure of molecules, which forms the basis of research. So happy science day to you all. Now, before moving on into uh, the next topic, I would want you all to listen to me carefully because I'm going to ask you a question. OK, so I would like you to concentrate on what I'm going to say for the next one minute, because after that you are going to have a I'm question. Sorry for disturbing, ma'am. Yes, ma your screen is not visible, ma'am. Is it, ma'am? Not visible, ma'am. My because of your whiteboard is opening, ma'am. Visible, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, so I visible think students. Visible. Can you able to see the screen? Yeah. 
visible only ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am okay 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 ma'am proceed ma'am sorry ma'am okay ma'am no problem no problem okay guys thank you for being so active so you are listening thank you so much okay so listen to me for the next one minute i have a question as i told you i have a question okay so we are just going to see our daily routine basic daily routine okay so in general what we do is we get up in the morning on the awakening sound of alarm we switch on the light and then rush towards the washroom because we have to get ready to college isn't it then we switch on the geyser finish off our daily course then we press our dress using iron box take a quick shower then we dry our hair using hair blower put on some basic cosmetics like talcum powder or deo because we need to smell good too right then we rush towards our bus and after that we reach our college and then we have to run to the classes if you are a faculty like me you will have to take your laptop put on the projector connect internet and then have to take the live classes and apart from that we have to correct papers notes etc and we have pen for that okay if you are a student you have no other way but to attend the class and in the afternoon we'll have lab classes and the laboratory will have all the equipments that are required for the study and once the college session is over we come back to uh, come back home using our same transportation then we relax ourselves listen to some music entertain us through some tv shows then we study and again lights off back to bed hope you listen to me isn't it can anyone respond yes ma'am listening ma'am yes, ma i'm listening ma'am okay ma'am okay yes, so can you tell me how many gadgets i used here can anyone from the participant tell me how many gadgets did i use here just a guess there's nothing wrong in okay. guessing what ma one gadget only one gadget what was it laptop laptop okay ma okay what about iron box geyser alarm light switch Probably more than 50 gadgets ma'am yeah very good ma what's your name may i know your name arvind raj ma'am arvind raj you are from which class ma csbs ma b section csbs kudos to you arvind well done it was 15 okay now listen to me my motive was not to make you uh, concentrate on what i said and count the number of gadgets but i wanted you all to realize that our day starts with gadget that is with science and technology and again it ends with science and technology we cannot imagine our life without science and technology in it isn't it for example even bus is an invention and without bus i can't imagine walking to college starting from avadi me my college is in sungwa chatram so i cannot imagine myself walking from avadi to sungwa sungwa chatram it will literally take one day and you know so many scientists have worked on this and they have made our life comfortable by working or by putting on all their efforts into new discoveries or new inventions for example uh, it is so easy for us to switch on the light now when we switch it on we have light but you know it took about 278 years of research for electricity to come into application we have a scientist by name william gilbers who described electricity and magnetism way back in 1600 okay it was in 1600 but its application in the form of edison's commercially available long lasting light bulb was lit in 1878 so if you subtract 1878 from i mean if you minus 1878 and 1600 you will get 278 years so it was 278 years of hard work 
and that too during 16th century you know that we don't have any internet facility as we have now they so they do not have any backlog reference to refer to no google to help them but it was a hard work that made us to have a comfortable life so let us have a quick view on few scientists and their discoveries i want you to go through the slide are you able to see this slide yes ma'am yes ma'am okay so can anyone tell me who ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am slide okay. is visible ma'am okay ma'am can anyone just tell me who is the scientist okay i'll tell you he is galileo Galilei and he was the person who ruled out the myth that sun revolved around the earth and he brought out astronomy Galileo actually became blind in his later age and people thought that it was due to staring at the sun but now it is understood that it is because of the cataract or glaucoma he is a school dropout but he is a real, he is our real hero isn't it is the slide moving ma i have been changed to attendee ma'am maybe that's the reason prithika ma'am ma'am tell me ma'am yeah i have been changed to attendee shall i change to attendee ma'am No, no. I have been changed to attendee. I think so. That is why okay, I'm not okay, able to. Okay, okay, ma'am. I will check, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Your name. Professor, your name is not in this meeting, ma'am. Ah, uh, it should be there, ma'am, because uh, I cannot be able to see your name, ma'am. But I'm here, ma'am, in this meeting, and uh, I have been changed to attendee now. One second, one second, ma'am. I will see in my phone, ma'am. Yeah, I'm in attendee. Could you find ma'am? Mm. Not able to find ma'am. Just, just I am searching ma'am. One second. Ma One second. Okay ma'am. Okay, ma'am. You can proceed, ma'am. Okay, okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, so I was talking about Galileo. Okay, the next scientist. Can anyone guess the scientist? Okay, 
I'll just tell. It is Sir Isaac Newton. And in 17th century, Sir Isaac Newton unveiled the laws of motion launching modern physics. You know, Newton kept an account of all his sins that he committed. His mother wanted him to become a farmer, but he chose to be a professor. One fine day when he was sitting below the uh, apple tree, you all know that maybe he was pondering on the sins that he has committed. One apple fell on him and that made him known to the world. Next is another scientist and he is William Harvey. William Harvey was actually born on Fool's Day, 1st April 1578. But he was not at all a fool because he was a person who established modern biology with study of circulation of blood. Then we have Christian Huygens and he's the first physicist to use formulae in physics. He advanced in the field of optics and mechanics and also invented pendulum clock. Later, further developments occurred when technology and innovation reshaped the world over the next few centuries, starting with steam engine in the early 1800s, then development of roadways and railways, air travel, telegraph, telephone, radio, television, etc., etc. And in 20th century, you all know these inventions, isn't it? That is theories of relativity by Einstein, quantum theory by Max Planck, and uh, clicking of the double helix structure of DNA by James Watson and Francis Crick, which was a breakthrough in medicine because following this, we had cloning, even mutation of genes and all which plays a, a major role in the advancements, in the developments in the field of science. Then, in the later uh, 20th century, we had a breakthrough in computer technology. So in technology, we had advancements in computers and in science, we had an unpredictable evolution of nanomaterials. Let me just throw some light on nanomaterial and we'll see the applications of nanomaterials. Please don't worry, I'll wind it up within the time that is allotted to me. Okay, so you may be knowing that nanomaterials are very small materials whose size varies from 1 to 50 nanometer. So what is nanometer? 1 nanometer is 10 to the power minus 9 meter. So it is very, very small in size. That is, it is even smaller than the thickness of one single sheet of paper. And examples of nanomaterials are nanocrystals or quantum dots. There are three types of nanomaterials. One dimensional nanomaterial, two dimensional and three dimensional. One dimensional nanomaterials have just X axis in their dimensions and they are nothing but thin films. One dimensional are thin films. Two dimensionals are having X and Y axis and they are nothing but tubular formed nanomaterials. So we have nano wires here, nano rods and nano tubes. Then we have three dimensional nanomaterials. Three dimensional nanomaterials have three different dimensions, X, Y and Z. And so they have the shape of a crystal or a colloid. Nanotechnology is something which you all should know. Though the definition may feel a little bit clumsy, nanotechnology is the design, characterization, production and applications of structures, systems and devices by controlling size and shape at 10 to the power minus 9 meter scale or the single atomic level. So in simple words, I can say that nanotechnology is nothing but the application of nanomaterials in various technologies. What makes nanomaterials so unique and so widely applied, widely used? Nanomaterials have unique properties like size dependent properties. That is, the size of nanomaterials varies with the 
size of the material that is present. So considering the common properties, nanomaterials have low melting point. They have unexpected optical properties, super paramagnetic magnetic property, and they are elastic, tough, hard, and ductile according to the mechanical properties. And in electrical properties, we can consider nanomaterial as a semiconductor or a good conductor. There are six different types of nanomaterials. One is carbon based nanoparticle. Then we have ceramic nanoparticles, metal nanoparticles, semiconducting nanomaterials, polymeric nanomaterials, and lipid based nanomaterials. Anyway, we are not going to go into the depth of this. The name itself implies the category of this nanomaterial. The most advancement in nanomaterial was carbon nanotube. What is carbon nanotube? Carbon nanotube is the allotrope of carbon with a nanostructure having length to diameter ratio greater than one lakh. So you can imagine how tiny is a carbon nanotube. Carbon nanotube can be abbreviated as CNT and carbon nanotube are nothing but extended tubes of rolled graphite sheets. You know that graphite is made up of carbon, right? And the structure of carbon nano, nanotube is very important because uh, this is what gives a unique property to carbon nanotube. So in carbon nanotube, each carbon atom in the carbon atom is linked by covalent bond. Covalent bond is a strong bond. And the nanotube as such is held together by Van der Waals force of attraction. Van der Waals force of attraction is not as strong as covalent bond. Nanotubes are of two types, single wall carbon nanotube and multi wall carbon nanotube. So let's just see the basic differences between single wall carbon nanotube and multi wall carbon nanotube. Single wall nanotube is, you can imagine that we have taken one single sheet of graphite and we have rolled it on. So when we roll one single sheet of graphite, we get single wall carbon nanotube. And again, we have to remember the bonding. The bonding says that, the study says that the bonding is, bonding between each carbon atom is covalent bonding. It's a strong bond. And the nanotube as such is held by Van der Waals force of attraction. Then we have multi-wall carbon nanotube. And here as in the image shows, you can see four different uh, nanotube rolled one above another. So here we can imagine the state as taking uh, three to four graphite sheet, rolling it one above another. The beauty of this multi-wall carbon nanotube is, though we have number of graphite sheets rolled one above another, there is no friction between each layer. And this property makes them apply in case of medicines and drug delivery. Coming to synthesis of nanomaterials, there are two, two uh, types of synthesis. Top-down process, which is also called as physical method or hard method. Then we have bottom-up process, which is chemical or soft method. Okay, so there are two types or two methods of synthesis of nanomaterials. Top-down process or bottom-up process. We'll just see what it is. Though we are not going to look into various synthetic methods, but we'll see what is the basic difference between top-down process and bottom-up process. In top-down process, we start with bulk materials. So the starting material will be bulk material, and we cut down the bulk materials into very small fragments, which gets converted into nanomaterial. So top-down is starting from large size particle to nanomaterial. In bottom up, as you can see here, we start with atomic precursors or molecular precursors. And atomic scale or molecular scale, again, they are going to be very small in size. And here they combine with each other and they, I mean, uh, it undergoes a synthetic process 
and from that we get an agglomerated structure of nano molecule or a nano material so these are the two methods of synthesis one is top down process and the other one is bottom up process okay now let's see the applications we'll look into the applications very quickly before winding up this session so i have started the application with our most favorite gadget that is mobile mobile phones and you would have heard of mof mof is a nanotechnology concept which was developed by nokia and university of cambridge mof is a self charging light source using uh, photovoltaic nano wire grass covering its surface and because of this photovoltaic nano wire it can self charge itself this makes use of nano scale electronics that is nano scale mesh of fibers which allows flexibility and you know what mof can be used in any shape you can you can also wear it on your wrist as we wear a watch or you can use it in the form of tablet also so nanotechnology has given a good concept to mobile technology here though it cannot be commercialized nokia could not commercialize it the present day mobile manufacturers are making use of this technology and we will have it in near future the next application is nano memristors by hp you should know what is a memristor most of you may be knowing what is a memristor memristor is a port manu of memory and resistor unit that is it is a combination of memory and resistor unit the special property is resistance can be programmed and subsequently it remains stored as a memory function memristors are actually stable and they remember their state even if the device loses power here we make use of titanium dioxide the nano material of titanium dioxide the nano wire coated with titanium dioxide in between two metal electrodes and by reducing the diameters of nano wires we can increase the memory density when we compare it with the conventional flash memory chips magnetic nano wires made of an alloy of iron and nickel are being used to create dense memory devices these days so we can find the application of titanium dioxide nano material in memristors which is used by hp then the application of nano material in solar cells you may know the working of solar cells right solar cells they absorb solar radiation and because of this solar radiation the uh, solar radiation that is absorbed that is movement of electrons and a photovoltaic effect is created this photovoltaic effect is boosted by the usage of molybdenum disulfide which has a sandwich structure the nano molybdenum disulfide has a very good band gap and this can absorb a lot of sunlight and can generate a large amount of electricity compared to the conventional solar cells yeah then comes automobile industry in automobile industry we have yeah we have a lot of advancements like we have driverless car uh, i mean driver free car now that is bot induced car and we also have electric vehicles so here i'm going to just tell you about um the car's body panels which acts as the battery here what we do is extremely thin and strong carbon fiber is used to replace the car's steel body panels and this can be done or this can be used in spaces like roof door bonnet and the floor and this carbon fiber this nano carbon fiber it will act as a battery so they can absorb or they can generate electricity the latest nano materials 
made of extremely thin and strong carbon fiber car carbon fiber fibers what they do actually is they can reduce the weight of the car by 15% and they can also serve as a battery next is our dream car right it is lamborghini electric car lamborghini electric car actually makes use of carbon nano fibers to recharge another interesting thing here is lamborghini makes use of high capacity super capacitors and not batteries because high capacity super capacitors can store large amount of energy and they can discharge this energy too this charge increase storage and also increase performance without depending on any chemical reactions is uh, the advancements of nanotechnology in aerospace technology in aerospace or in the construction of an aeroplane what we desire is a lighter stronger fatigue and corrosion resistant and the metals that are resistant to extreme conditions in case of aeroplanes nano titanium nickel alloy in combo with extra ordinary nickel i mean uh, alloys they yield good strength and super elasticity nano coatings like magnesium alloys are far lighter than steel or aluminium so it gives a weightless feeling to the floating body nano materials are less, less toxic here compared to the chromium coatings that are provided to the conventional method used aircrafts so this was about the application of nanotechnology or nanomaterials in aerospace technology yeah then comes another advancement lab on chip you know that chip is a very small device isn't it and when we make use of nano materials it can even have a micro structure lab on chip is executing all the uh, laboratorical skills on a small chip and generating the result immediately for example is that of a pregnancy kit where you get the results immediately get the is just a kit is just a small chip and this chip makes use of nano material so that it can reduce its size so this is about lab on chip and lab on chip is a very good advancement in science and technology yeah then we have computer technology you know you know that in computer technology we make use of semiconducting devices and the semiconducting devices can be in the nano form nano silicon nano germanium can also be used here plasmons in nano photonics can be used here and even a chip which are very micro in shape miniature transistors and for display techniques we can also make use of nano rods and nano dots so we find a vast usage or vast application of nano materials in almost all engineering fields let's see the application of nano materials in oil and gas industry in oil and gas industry we deal with drilling and extracting oil so we have to deal with oil viscosity and even in the recovery ratio recovery of oil from the earth crust so here we have to concentrate on certain properties like reducing the oil viscosity increasing oil recovery reducing the interface tension altering wettability and enhancing drilling the nanoparticles used here are zinc oxide for reducing the oil viscosity and for altering wettability and enhancing drilling process we can make use of zirconium oxide titanium oxide and nickel oxide then is the application of nano materials in textile and fabric industry in textile and fabric industry we have an interesting concept that is self cleaning fabrics self cleaning fabrics are having a coating it has the coating of 
sil nano silver particles silver oxide particle and uh, nano silver oxide particle what it does is it behaves as a antimicrobial uh, microbial structure and it does not allow the growth of microorganisms on the fabrics and this is actually hydrophobic in nature because you can see here you know that when water droplets fall on the surface of a lotus leaf it won't stick on the surface of the leaf but it will always make it outstanding or it will keep it away from the leaf in the form of water droplets we can also call it as hydrophobic nature that is it will not gel with water the same concept is used here in case of silver oxide coating silver oxide coating will act as a hydrophobic substance here and it will not allow water to drench into the fabric and it will ripple away all the dust that falls over it then coming to food industry food industry also has i mean nanotechnology has a very good role to play in food food industry also right from processing of the food packing of the food detection of food borne pathogens and extinction of shelf life for all these things we make use of nano materials like in agriculture in agriculture we concentrate on controlling the pest and then we also have to monitor the soil condition water availability and the crops present here so for that we have we can make use of nano carbon nano sil silver nano silica and nano aluminum silicates which can be used to control pests nano sensors that can be used to monitor soil condition water availability and the crops then coming into cosmetology now before going on into cosmetology i would like uh, to give a little bit of tip regarding cosmetology it is always better to avoid cosmetics because cosmetics they come in contact with our skin they come in direct contact with our skin and there are a possibility for these cosmetics to bring about various health hazards to us because these cosmetics they have large amount of heavy metals in it and these heavy metals are so dangerous that they can even lead to cancer but let me just tell you the use of nano materials in cosmetics nano gold particles are used in anti wrinkle creams nano materials are also used in sunscreen lotions many brands like l'oreal also makes use of nano materials and whenever we buy something or buy some cosmetics for ourselves we should be very cautious to go through the ingredients that are given in the uh, cosmetics as i told you cosmetics comes in direct contact with our skin so let us not give cosmetics a chance to invade our body and let us not land into any trouble so better to stay away from cosmetics but there are situations where we have to highlight ourselves to i mean to highlight our presence in that case please don't compromise with the quality pay a little extra amount and go for a quality product then coming to cancer cancer treatment okay i think we are running short of time i'll just move away quickly nano materials are also used in cancer treatment uh we can see here when a person is diagnosed with cancer his tumor is diagnosed and it is the tumor is targeted with the help of nano material when the drug delivery is provided through a carbon nano tube through a nano material it will just go and invade on the target tumor and it will not affect the nearby tissues so when it is targeted when the tumor is targeted by the medication sent through nano material it will start honing on the tumor that it will start killing the cancer cell and once the cancer cells are killed you will get a improved imaging and finally 
people or, or the person is free from cancer. In the early days, if a person was infected with cancer, the ultimate end of the patient was death. But these days, because of advancements in science and technology, especially uh, to nanotechnology, we can see that 95% of the cancer patients are recovering if it is diagnosed in the earlier stage. Then nanomaterials are also used for superhuman vision. That is when we make use of a graphene layer, it will act as a protective lens from electromagnetic radiation and it can restore good vision to us. Artificial heart, obviously an interesting thing. In heart, in artificial heart, carbon nanotubes are used to send electric shocks or to send electric signals to make it real life like the real heart. Dentistry, in dentistry also we are making use of carbon nanomaterials like gold nanoparticles or quantum nanodots either to fill the cavity or to etch uh, the scales that are formed on the uh, dental cavities. Then even for repairing neurological disorders, carbon nanotubes, fullerenes, liposomes, solid lipid, gold nanoparticles are used. And it is used to uh, cure disease like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's or ischemic stroke or other neurological tumors. Though we have a lot of advancements in nanotechnology, we should always look into the pitfalls of nanotechnology, the drawbacks of nanotechnology. In whatever way we see, nanotechnology may have few disadvantages, but the advantages of nanotechnology makes it a boon to the environment, to the society. If we see the disadvantages, nanotechnology is expensive and it can easily enter into the body through skin because it is very small in size. The nano bombs that are used in destructive purposes and we have a fear of gray goo. You may be knowing what is gray goo scenario, is it? It is a hypothetical global scenario and that is because of the advancements in nanobots. So there is a fear that these nanobots may self-replicate and it may consume all the biomass in the earth and it will fully overtake the earth. Nano, nanobots may fill the earth surface. Because of the advancements in nanotechnology, there is loss of employment and threat to farmers also. So these are the pitfalls of nanotechnology. But as I told you, though there are a lot of negatives, there are few negatives in nanotechnology. It has hundreds and thousand times of benefits that are to be looked on to. And you are all young students who can work on to eradicate the pitfalls of nanotechnology. Team this, the theme for Science Day celebration 2022, as stated by Dr. Jitender, is integrated approach in science and technology for sustainable future. That is, uh, Dr. Jitender, in his own words, I'll tell you what he has said in a press meet. He said that integration of all scientific departments, which can work on theme-based approach, Extended scientific integration, encompassing engineering, medical and other institutions, extra scientific integration involving identification of the needs of other ministries like Jal Shakti, railways, etc. and extended science driven, all inclusive approach integrating startups and industry. Though it may be, it may look like a complicated sentence. The gist of this statement is we can have an integrated work towards science and technology for a sustainable future. Sustainable future is enjoying all the benefits that science and technology has given us and allowing 
our future also to enjoy all the benefits that we have enjoyed through the science and technology. Now, as young students, I would like to advise you, you can get into a lot of collaboration projects that are sponsored by science and technology welfare units. Even in DRDO, you know that DRDO is sponsoring internship for engineering students. If you are interested in machine learning, you can you can apply for machine learning there. But if you are interested in something related to physics and chemistry, you can apply in the field of physics and chemistry also. The plus point of working with um, bigger ministries of India is that you will get to know the work culture there. You'll be able to adapt yourself to working hard towards finding out new discoveries or new inventions. As I showed you few scientists in the earlier slides, I would encourage you to work on science and technology. And in future, if I'm going to give a talk like this on Science Day, I would like to include your photograph also as one of the scientists there. It will be a proud moment for me, your teachers and above all your parents. With this, I would like to end my presentation. So thank you all. Hope it was a useful presentation to you all. Thank you guys. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank, uh, thank you, you ma'am. Ma thank you, thank you. Really, Darshni? Is there anything the students wants to convey? If you have any doubts regarding um, the project works or internships um, in DRDO or other ministries, you can contact me or other faculty members of your college. If you want to contact me, you can uh, connect with me in LinkedIn. I'm available by the name Buana Jiren, B-H-U-V-A-N-A-J-E-R-I-N in LinkedIn. I would also encourage you all to register yourself in LinkedIn because LinkedIn is a professional society where you will get to know with many of your peers there and it will be a very good platform for you to collaborate with your peers and work with them. So please do try LinkedIn platform. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace of today and creates a vision of tomorrow. Endings are there to teach us gratitude. Now I render my sincere thanks to Buana ma'am for wonderfully taking this session. I also thank our principal, staff members and all student friends for joining this event and making it a memorable one. Thank you until we meet in another interesting session. Thank you. Thank you, Priyadarshini. Ma'am, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. So shall I leave, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Okay, students can leave from the meeting. Thank you, students.
たいなんです